Good morning, you two. How are you doing? So doing great. So great. How are Thanks you? For Zero. Absolutely. <clears throat> I, I got to ask you right off the bat, though. That that theme song for for Kiff. I mean, I hope I, I want that song to be the start of my day every day because there's so much sure. energy to it, and and it really it's got a positive vibration about it. Oh yeah, it's thrilling. I mean, when they shared it with us for the first time, it it was so exciting, and like now I feel like. I've heard it a couple times, and I'm like, this is going to be iconic. Yep. This is going to be one of those <laughs> iconic theme songs, at least in my mind. Yeah, I agree. The whole idea of KIF is 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 going to be iconic in the way that it's not just for kids. It's for everybody. I I, I really do picture people going, hey, did you catch that latest episode of KIF last night? Man, you, you got to get on this show. Yeah, I mean, you know, in every, like, press tour, they're like, yeah, it's fun for the whole family. But I swear... It is actually really, really funny. Um, I find myself laughing out loud constantly. I actually might tune into this, and I don't really watch a ton of cartoons, admittedly, um, but it's so much fun. I mean, the dynamic between um, Barry and Kiff is hilarious, and like the concepts of the episodes are just so out there and ridiculous. I mean, the the goat wall hive mind. I mean, <laughs> age, maybe you could like describe some of the episodes but they're like the, the concepts are so ridiculous that i think adults are going to have a hard time not sitting down and watching it with their kids you were talking about the the opening number and music is such a huge part of this show Absolutely. uh nick small is one of the creators along with lucy heavens and nick is a musician and man we not only is the not only is the opening credits like such a great song but man we have really catchy songs across genres throughout the show and uh, Kimiko is such an amazing singer and I am such a passable singer and it has been so much fun making music on these show with these amazing people. Well, it's it's like a first step of a brand new beginning then, isn't it? Where, where you can bring in that music and get the dancing going and, and really, I mean, I, I love it to watch everybody's eyes light up when something like this happens on television. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now to be the chill bunny bestie named Barry, there, Mister Michael. I mean, I mean, the what what happens here with this character? Did they, did they let you create the voice, or do they come to you and say, um, "This is how we're hearing it"? Can you bring it forward? Yeah, you know, I I, I really vibed with this when I read the audition. Like, uh, and I I think <laughs> that I think that uh, when I was talking to Nick and Lucy, I was very open to them changing and tinkering with it. But we were pretty much on the same page right away. Barry is like, he is a big heart, you know, like he is a very vulnerable, emotional, yeah. kind of quiet guy who goes along with Kip and is like, kind of keeps his things under wraps until he can't anymore. And I, I related to that and I wanted him to sort of have this like gentleness and expressiveness. And it's been really fun seeing all the different places they take this character. Also, I have a I have an obsession with the the smallness of his little tiny legs <laughs> and the sort of enormousness of his little beanbag body. He's just such a weird creature, and I love doing the voice for him. <laughs> now you're going to become part of a new term, Kamiko, in in the way that I, I can just hear people saying, "Oh, that's so kiffy, kiffy," you know, and, and, and because we're all going to be doing kiffy moments out here, and and it's going to become a brand new term. Yeah, what's funny is it's actually um, slang in South Africa for cool. That's what kiff really? means. So I feel like we're bringing, yeah, we're bringing kiff to the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> kiff to the masses. Pretty kiff, honestly. Pretty kiff. Yeah, pretty, pretty freaking kiff, dude. Now, H. Michael, one of the things that I've always loved about the Disney Channel as well as Disney Plus is the the length of, of, of a different episode is so important because of the attention span of children as well as adults. How is, is there going to be one of those in, involved in this as well? I mean, it can be 15 minutes. It can be 30 minutes. But Disney is very much aware of the length. Yeah, no, I, we're doing so our episodes are 22 minutes, but it's two stories. Okay. So each actual like episode is 11 minutes they're just put together in a little mm -hmm, block mm -hmm. which i'll be honest a little embarrassing but boy that works just right for my add <laughs> uh, i can i can i can sit i can watch a whole story i can pause it i can go off and butts around and make myself a snack and come back and then uh, uh intake the next one intake is a very weird way to say watch a show but uh <laughs> but uh you know what that's that's Absorb. how i roll 
<laughs> yes, absorb. Yeah, really, right? Oh. That's so true. That's so true. So now, now, Kamiko, what when when it comes to putting this together, then when with each episode at eleven minutes, what does that mean to you as a voiceover actor? Because I mean, there are times I go into the into that studio and I come out two hours later with no voice. What is it like for you? Well, you know, Kiff is very excitable. She's very yeah. um, out there, and and she has a lot of energy. But thankfully, you know, like technically they they look out for me you know i don't have to do records for m- much longer than a couple hours and um and we have so much fun with it. it 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 enables me to be as ridiculous and out there as possible and um yeah we have a great time the 11 minute thing is uh, thankfully not my problem <laughs> they have to <laughs> cut it down somehow and make it real real nice and tight um and uh and they're really brilliant at doing that Wow. Um, yeah. Speaking of those voices, H. Michael, the, the one of the things that uh, do do you use it ever out there in in the public where you just kind of you know you, you turn on a character from let's say the Family Guy or American Dad or even from Kiff and people they kind of look around going where where have I heard this before and you know j- just to get yeah, their natural reaction. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's so funny? Usually, if I'm doing a voice, it's for a friend's kids. Yeah. Like I, they're trying to get their kid excited to meet me, and they go, like, "Oh, he's the voice of so and so from this cartoon or from this cartoon." And across the board, you do the voice for kids, their faces do not change. They stare at you blankly and then they go like, can I have graham crackers and walk away? And it, it is the most humbling experience to go like, I got something, this kid's, got, oh boy, it's gonna blow his mind. And then you like unanimously across the board, you get nothing back. <laughs> it's so funny because like with, with Kip's voice or with any voice that I do, like people are like, oh yeah, do this voice, do this voice. It's often so close to my own voice. <laughs> it's just like sort of elevated in a certain rhythm or like melody. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a similar expression, but I think for different reasons. <laughs> How, how did you learn to grow into that voice? Because, I mean, I, I remember being in elementary school and, and people would make fun of everybody else's voices or they would try to impersonate them. Did, did you just go, forget it, guys. I, I'm, I am me. I'm always going to be me. This is who I am. And then, and then you go on to do what you're doing right now. Uh, you know, what's what's a blessing and a curse is, you know how you can't really hear your own voice. <laughs> and then you're, you're just horrified when you hear yourself on a voice memo or a voicemail and you're like, that's what I sound like. Um, I've always heard feedback that my voice was a certain way, but I never, you know, to me, it's just my voice. And, um, it's something that's been, you know, a blessing and a curse, but mostly a strength of mine. And so I, I just kind of embrace it. And especially, you know, now that I get so much work based off of my voice, I I can't really complain. (laughs) (laughs) And I think for me, like uh, my voice on its own Mm -hmm. is pretty much it's not pretty normal and so like i come from the world of like sketch and improv and uh and so putting on characters for shows like this is so much fun because i don't get to play really big weirdos like if i'm doing live action stuff Mm -hmm. i i I look like a guy who works at like an rei or something like (laughs) some some pleasant white dude and then uh, on television i can be uh, an old lady or a bunny or a superhero or a monster and uh, that's honestly the the work that I, I enjoy the most these days. What's so incredible uh, about Kiff starting up uh, on on the Disney Channel as well as Disney Plus is that this this is the month that we are celebrating the 100 year legacy of Disney. I mean, you what a better way to celebrate it than to put this on television into this new generation? Amen. Yeah, I mean it's true honor. Disney's you know classic. It's it's sort of been. Uh, it's where how I grew up, you know. It's it's you know the live action, the cartoons. Like I don't know, it was my entire childhood, so it's yeah. really cool to be a part yeah. of. Yeah, I, I like thinking about the fact that for some some another generation will be a part of their childhood the way that like the early Disney movies were a part of mine. Exactly. Uh, really exciting. Oh my God! Yeah, because that's that's how I saw movies as a kid at the drive-in of all things. We would go see, you know, uh, Kurt Russell in a Disney movie. It's like, oh my God! And then and you know and and all these different pirate movies and stuff. And it was Disney all over the place. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. Young Kurt Russell, what a hunk. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when you go back and you watch like the computer that wore red tennis shoes, you watch a show like that, and you go, oh my God, this this is still in touch with today, except computers back then took up entire rooms. Oh my gosh, yeah. I think the, the beauty of KIF is that it's um, 
in terms of like aesthetic and like illustration and animation, I feel like it's timeless. I think it'll stand the test of time. Yeah. I think um, the themes and the humor, I think, um, is going to be good for all ages. Everyone's going to love it. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it brings a lot of nostalgia for me, I know, because um, it reminds me of those childhood cartoons that I used to watch on Saturdays. And, yep. Um, Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That you're so right about that because I mean we would get up at six o'clock in the morning just to watch that kind of stuff. Then you know what? That explains the reason why I took an instant liking then to Kiff because I mean all of a sudden I felt like I was taken away from the real world and I was living this world with with you guys. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I think yeah. I think there's something about animated characters where because we recognize them as not being. Um, something in the real world because yeah. like when you watch for me like when I watch acting it's like I'm almost critiquing I'm looking for the flaws in somebody's performance mm -hmm. and I feel like when you're looking at animated characters you can sort of impose a lot of feelings and, and impressions from your own life onto these characters that clearly aren't real so I there's a little magic in there for me I still I still like animation as a grown man which is a shame and please cut that out of this interview <laughs> <laughs> Well, when, when you're creating with Lucy and Nick, I mean, do you guys get to do it in, in, in one big situation? And what I mean by that is a lot of these bands, these musicians are coming together and they're in the studio together as a band and it's not individual anymore. Do you guys get to have those moments where you're reading in the same room together with, with Lucy and Nick? Not often in the same room. I actually don't even know if I've met Lucy and Nick in life i mean <laughs> like it's all been over zoom um with h i met him kind of by accident a few weeks ago when we, i was coming out of the studio he was going in um but yeah it, it's it's similarly insular um in the way the animation can be you know you kind of record by yourself and then it's the voice director and the creator's magic that put these you know scenes together and it sounds like dialogue but um, occasionally, uh, H and I will have the pleasure of working with one another over Zoom. We get to do like mini ensemble records, and that's always a, a delight because then they get to hear his read and his interpretation of the scene, and it's just uh, it's so fun. It brings yeah. a lot a lot of like exciting energy to the project. We got to start the process by recording together, which was really nice because <clears throat> I get to you get to feel the dynamic, mm -hmm. you get to see how the characters play off of each other. So then when when I'm doing a record on my own now, even if I'm I'm reading with Sam Regal, who's an amazing voice director, I can kind of hear Kimiko uh, Kimiko in my yep. head, yep. and yep. Um, that really helps. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, and that that's the way I am as a producer. When when we would have like dialogue commercials and things like that, it's like I, I don't need both of you here. Let, I, I hear it already in my head. We're gonna do it my way, <laughs> and, and it just makes it tighter and brighter and it really does sound like a better connection wow awesome. fascinating i don't think i have the ear for it but that's like such a skill set well that that's that's just years of program directors and radio station consultants going do it this way do it this way can you not hear it do you know who you're talking to and do you ever <laughs> do you ever find yourself like that with with the with your characters and things that you do with your voiceovers do, do you sit there and envision who is receiving what we are sending out Oh yeah, I think I think it helps with um, the creation of the character and mm -hmm. like the interpretation of the scenes. Um, you know, just how how things are going to play out. Um, also, it's helpful because you know the the creators who um, imagine this entire scenario are there to kind of guide you along the way and say like, yeah, that's not it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a really fun process because even if you're so far off, sometimes that works. And sometimes it, it works oddly <laughs> in the best way. And so it's a it's a nice collaboration. Yeah, I think it's really fun to come into a record with a bunch of ideas, yep. even if they're wrong. Yeah. Because <laughs> start the conversation, even if you're messing it up. If they're going, like, oh, no, 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 it's way over here. Coming in flat and having somebody just try to put the performance onto you is such a boring way to do it. And I feel like everybody in this process has big opinions and big ideas. People are improvising, people are pitching jokes. And I think that collaboration is really helping make create the show's voice because it's such a weird group mind thing. It's not just Nick and Lucy are such a big part of this and gosh, they are doing an amazing job, but everybody has a little part of their voice involved in it. And I think that that thing is what's making Kiff and I think that's really exciting oh my god that you you just bring back you you bring back a, a great memory in the way that my voice coach would always say you know I know that we did like so many different reads but I want one more out of you but I want you to put your personality into it and dang if that's not usually the one that they take the one because you've done it so much now where you just let it go and it's like there it is 
Yeah, yeah. I think I, I find that people uh, really uh, get excited when when it's like an unusual take on something or like or there's like a little little flutter in your voice that's like, you know, that's a little less controlled. There's something about it that's, I think, very human and and adding that humanness into, you know, a world of animals is <laughs> is, I think, what helps it be relatable. So let me ask you the, the, the typical viewer question nowadays, because Disney Plus is very good at this, is that are we going to get one episode a week or are we going to get at least two or three at a time? Well, oh, yeah. technically, uh, there, are, there are two episodes in one, That's so it's right. two 11-minute episodes. Uh, yeah, but uh, H, maybe you have a little more insight into how it rolls out. I don't know what the rollout is going to be. <clears throat> I thought my, my, my first thought was that we were going to get five yeah. in the first in the first group on the 15th on Disney Plus, but I don't know, and I apologize to the programmer <laughs> if that's incorrect. But we'll, be, we'll definitely be getting them two at a time because they're they're grouped together, which for my attention span is so nice yeah. to have a little 11 minute chunk and then deposit and make some popcorn and then get another 11 minute chunk. Oh my God, and well, yeah. first of all, I do like the Disney format because what it does is I, I have a binge watching journal that I keep, and so that's how I know how to go back to the show. And so then this way, then I know that on Wednesdays or on Fridays, this is what Disney's going to give to me, and I've, I've just got to keep that journal up to date. Are we That's in your so binge, smart. binge watching journal? We made it. We made it in the journal. Yes, yeah, it's on there, buddy. <laughs> That's yes. my moment, man. We made it. We made it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because you're you're my you're you're my escape from the real world, and it's because. And, but you know, it's so fun to talk with you guys because it just shows that what the imagination is all about and what you can do with it. And that's what I want listeners to pick up on as well: is that believe in it, believe in whatever voice you have inside, and bring it out to the people. Oh, it's so true. So true. Your own uniqueness is what makes you special. Is that like, I, I think I just said uh, the same thing twice. In that one <laughs> no, I think, I think you just said the theme of our show. Uh, like, oh. we, guys, we stuck the landing so hard on this thing. <laughs> Kiss, your own uniqueness is what makes you special. We need to push that. <laughs> <laughs> Please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for the two of you. Aww, thank Aww. you. Thanks so much, Errol. So you bet. You guys be brilliant today, okay? Oh, thank you. You too. Will do.